Hello, Dark Yetis. I'm Gary, the Vacuum Tube Watch. And I've been thinking about doing this video for such a long time. So many things have changed around my lab. So, finally, finally, it's time to show you the lab. The Caritech Electronics Lab Tour. Enjoy! So, time to take you for a tour of the Caritech Electronics Lab. The place is a little bit discombobulated. There's all kinds of stuff on the tables. Some uh, parts storage and cables. Also uh, some temporary uh, part storage. This is my backup bench with the IBM Selectric on it and there's also one radio undergoing restoration. Some other stuff that I'm repairing. My V640 analog multimeter that I had uh, since my first or second lab. This is the tool board. Every single tool on it uh, has its shape drawn on it with a marker. So whenever I have some uh, tools on the bench, I know right away what I'm missing. This will be the power box for the workshop. And uh, uh, my plan is to add uh, the main separation transformer inside and the variac and a uh, dim bulb toaster. This is my long part uh, storage. I made it with some uh, cardboard tubes laying around and uh, it, uh, it serves me well storing those uh, pesky long uh, elements. This is um, the leader LBO 5880 scope that I used for some time but uh, it uh, kept uh, breaking on me more and more. This is uh, my vacuum tube tester. And this is the S1-112 uh, scope meter. The Soviet one. CGT, greetings for you. <coughs> and this is the speaker system. One of uh, the main speakers uh, in my lab. The Speckle 11 uh, spectral photometer. I still have to do a teardown and demonstration video of it. I got it from an abandoned uh, chemical lab when my friends were squatting it. Some old uh, devices from the Voltec Electronics days back, uh, back in my first lab. On, uh, on the bottom, uh, on the bottom, uh, this was a uh, preamp and a power control panel, speaker distribution panel. On top of that, uh, there's the prototype version of my uh, RPI2 caster controller. This is Radmore 5412, uh, a receiver I still need to repair. Those are pH meters I also got from that lab. Some uh, enclosures from, um, from disassembled devices uh, for my projects. This is uh, the network and home automation node. To the left we've got the 12 volt UPS. Uh, this is the cable modem, the router, the 8 port uh, gigabit Ethernet switch and uh, the Raspberry Pi. 
plus its own uh, backup power supply. A shelf with some vintage electronics exhibition and some not so vintage items. TPK 16, uh, an old uh, Polish uh, CCTV camera, it's not working. The CAN product uh, equalizer, I got it uh, from a uh, electronics flea market back in the first lab times. It, uh, it has some uh, problems with the operational amplifiers. On top of it, uh, there's the wooden box. I'd like to use it for my carimine project, the ferramin, the vacuum tube one. Another V640, the analog multimeter. Some devices I would like to do a uh, teardown video of. Old telephones, the test chamber for electronic components you saw in one video. Some not so good edition of legendary video game series. And uh, now let's go over to the auxiliary part storage. I've got electronic parts, cables, all that stuff in those boxes. And uh, one of the columns uh, up there is, uh, is mainly the vacuum tube stuff. Like, uh, like here, we've got uh, four boxes of vacuum tubes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my tube stock. Going lower, this is, uh, this is the library for uh, all of us here, me and my queer friends. Um, that's uh, all kinds of literature, both um, both uh, fiction and non-fiction. And uh, this is the thing that might be more, most interesting, because uh, this is my science and technology library. <laughs> the, the shelf, uh, double depth shelf with, uh, with something on physics, something on chemistry. A lot of uh, books on electronics, the other ZG40C speaker system, a Tascam Porta Studio 244 awaiting repair, the Simtron uh, 220 calculator still in repair, an enclosure of a recently disassembled power supply that I built uh, another power supply in it. Some uh, other old electronics. I still have to do the teardown of this. And it has vacuum tubes in it. Some vintage uh, PCBs. And this is my uh, secondary hi-fi system with the um, WS304 amplifier, the M9115 uh, tape deck. CDF-003R compact disc player and, uh, and some uh, cheap uh, DJ mixer that I modified. Of course, this is my uh, computer desk with with uh, everything uh, from web browsing to video editing and uh, and recording going on. This is the stream cam uh, that uh, looks at me when I'm at your at the desk. Then the Behringer microphone. The stream engine, the, the main computer of this place. And of course the, the turntable. A cheap one, uh, Omnitronic uh, DD1220. A knockoff of uh, Technics uh, SL1200. Uh, this is the main uh, hi-fi system. On the top, uh, there's the WS1 uh, 
power amplifier with uh, two EL84 per channel. And then there's the phono uh, preamplifier, also from Karitak Electronics, and um, and the mixer also Karitak. And then um, Diora CD player, Diora MDS uh, 440 tape deck, and uh, then the tuner, and uh, the Karitak AC1 audio computer, controlling the power for all this equ equipment, and also uh, acting as a networked uh, audio interface. Let's turn it around. Push the big red button, stalemate resolution button, stalemate resolved. And the amplifier is coming on. EM84 magic eye tubes lighting up. And uh, there's, uh, there's a uh, on-off sequence on this audio computer. There are two sections of the of the power. One of them is uh, switched on first and switched on last. And that's uh, in order to prevent noise and uh, popping and cracking. This uh, this is the enclosure of the IBM Selectric. This is a project in the works in the OPSES, Open Broadcaster Studio Enhanced Scene Switcher. And yes, it has a vacuum fluorescent display tube in it. And let's go to, to the, some storage. Uh, then there's the Philips um, ND, N4420 reel to reel machine. Vintage uh, Nixie tube multimeters. Mm, can I uh, turn it on? Look at them Nixie's glow. And some uh, part storage. An old uh, resistance, capacitance, and inductance measuring bridge. The drill press and uh, compressor in my shop. Uh, I've got a little compressor that I built uh, from a fridge compressor. And then there's the guitar and the speaker cabinet. And of course the ADHD project. And the dirty dozen amp in the works. And let's move to the bench. There's discombobulation, a lot of discombobulation. There's my fume extractor enhanced with the blink and light uh, for checking the status of uh, the bench cam here. There's uh, test equipment uh, starting with uh, the MZN-8C nonlinear distortion meter, the Zopan uh, PO-25 uh, sine wave generator that goes from uh, 20 Hz up to 1 MHz, the HAMAG uh, HAMAG HM204 analog oscilloscope, the vacuum tube voltmeter, a frequency meter, a vacuum tube power supply, that's the part storage, this is mostly vacuum tubes and terminal strips and all vintage equipment, resistors, stir resistors, Capacitors, 
semiconductors and other stuff. And of course, this is my band, the soldering station, Solomon SL20, my um, bench laptop. This is a uh, ThinkPad uh, T61. And uh, let's talk about uh, the way I do YouTube for a moment. Right above my bench, I've got uh, another Behringer C-1U microphone. The Logitech uh, C930 camera that looks at the test equipment. And the Razer Keo Pro. And that's, uh, that's that problematic uh, webcam that I use as, uh, as my bench cam. Sometimes I've got a lot of problems with it. And uh, this tablet right above the bench runs a uh, OBS controller. So uh, I can change scenes. If I want to zoom an image, uh, I just... Uh, I will just uh, tap one of uh, one of the scenes on it. And of course some geeky stuff on the wall. Why is the light shining so much? Right when I wanted to show you something, uh, the light has to... Yeah, <laughs> you may have seen it for a moment. The blinking lights. And uh, there's also the tertiary speaker system uh, above my bench. And uh, this is the secondary speaker setup. And some stuff on the wall. <laughs> yes, I'm naughty. Some other geeky stuff on the wall. My uh, monotype uh, stuff uh, collection. The information posters uh, from the 1960s, I think. Uh, the radioactivity lamp. If, uh, if the light... Uh, if it's so bright, uh, you can hardly see it, but I think you can see it. An old sign from my first lab. And um, my only Tektronics in, uh, in the collection, the 410 uh, physiological monitor. And two oscilloscope-shaped objects named uh, Mini 4. One of them is actually the, the first thing that uh, resembles a scope in my possession and I still keep it. I'm pretty much uh, emotionally drawn to it. It's, uh, it's such a pity that uh, I haven't kept my uh, second uh, real deal scope, OS-102. Because that one actually resembled a uh, vintage Tektronics. Let's go over here. This is my vinyl record collection and it's still teeny tiny. Being on a budget, I can't afford uh, buying so many of them. <laughs> I uh, power supply up to 10 volts. I uh, vacuum tube voltmeter and, uh, and my VS1 uh, vector scope. Keritech Electronic Archives and some empty shelves and and some other storage stuff and and some uh, keyboard uh, that waits for recombobulating and there's one uh, moving cart with a printer And two power supplies that go to 20 volts. And there's, uh, there's also uh, a uh, sewing machine stand, but I don't have this. 
I don't have the hinges for the sewing machine, so it now just uh, acts uh, as an uh, additional table with a lot of discombobulation going on it. <laughs> and that would be it. One more view on the lab. And that's Coco, my lab assistant. Oh, I almost forgot about uh, the things that are down there. This is the Capture WD3. My uh, my shop uh, vacuum cleaner. I modified it with uh, suction power adjustment. And that's some uh, tool and part storage. Some vintage uh, meters. Some of them I did a teardown on. Underneath the bench uh, some more discombobulation. My uh, my dummy load uh, with um, with the still incomplete parameter, a Soviet uh, S1-64 oscilloscope that I'm planning to restore. Some uh, storage solution. Uh, this uh, this cardboard tube for for the pieces of cable. And there's some cable on the rails, right, uh, right under the workbench. And uh, those cables uh, go through plastic tube uh, through through the bench. And whenever I uh, need, uh, whenever I need a, a, a cable because I'm uh, building an amp or something. I can just pull it out and uh, don't care. It's pretty handy and uh, gets out of the way. And uh, and this is my uh, Dremel with a flexible shaft. Normally when I don't work with it, I just keep it uh, close to the wall. Otherwise I, I can uh, Take it off the hook and get the shaft and work with it. And there is also the 12 volt DC power distribution panel. Underneath the panel there's the 5 part uh, gigabit uh, Ethernet switch uh, for for the devices I need uh, on the bench. If I'm working with something like uh, working on some computer on the bench, uh, then I will just connect the local area network uh, from this switch. And uh, this is uh, my hardware storage. I have used uh, this, uh, this solution uh, with mason jars uh, since my uh, first, first lab. Back, uh, back when I was young, uh, when I was a teenager and I had my uh, teeny tiny shop uh, in, uh, in the basement. Uh, living in uh, an apartment block uh, with my parents. That uh, I learned uh, this trick from uh, an old uh, Polish uh, DIY magazine and uh, have been using it happily ever after. Every, every one of my labs uh, had it. 
because it's just so practical and uh, and here with um, with this interior right uh, under the roof I have to utilize uh, every square centimeter the best way I can because I can't uh, put too much furniture into the room I have to use the slanted uh, ceiling and uh, of course a uh, railing with some uh, cable storage So that would be it for the shop tour of Caritec Electronics. I hope you enjoyed it.